So the Benton County Mosquito Control District was formed in 1957 um, by a vote of the people. And so when that happens, when a mosquito control district is formed, uh, then a board of trustees is um, put in place to kind of oversee the district. Um, so each county commissioner within that area, so once the district boundaries are formed, um, each county commissioner district within that boundary gets um, an appointee. And then if there are cities within those boundaries, then every incorporated city also gets um, a trustee on that board. And so for Benton County Mosquito Control District, as it currently stands, um, we have um, three Benton County Commissioner Districts. And so there would be one uh, member for each of those and then seven incorporated cities. Um, and so that is the relationship. So if, uh, the Benton County Commissioners had a question, then kind of chain of command would be for them to go through their representative um, as that voice. So as far as the money is concerned, so if you are a resident that resides within Benton County Mosquito Control District boundaries, then you would have see that as an assessment on your property taxes. And so you would have your regular property taxes for schools and such, and then you'd see things like weed control, conservation, mosquito. Um, and so that's your line item that we get paid through. So it's collected through your property taxes, goes to the Benton County Treasurer, and then they hold all of our funds. So when we're paying bills, paying staff, um, all of that money is going through the Benton County Treasurer's Office. There's a system for annexation into the district. Um, so one of the misconceptions that we get a lot is, well, there's two. One would be if I'm a resident of Benton County, then I'm within the Mosquito Control District. And that's not true because our district boundaries, um, I can cover um, the majority of the population of Benton County, but not all of Benton County. Um, and so you would wanna see if you're within the district. Um, and then also if you're within city limits, so sometimes as cities grow, that does not necessarily mean that the Mosquito Control District boundary grows. So as those um, cities grow, what would need to happen is the citizens in that area would want to um, talk to the city or talk to their commissioners and um, ask to be annexed in to the Mosquito Control District. Um, if there are enough residents that wanted to be annexed in, uh, that could go on the ballot. And so under a regular ballot of the people and they could vote to become part of the Mosquito Control District. There's also a petition method where you don't have to go through the county um, if you had a certain uh, number of residents within a certain area, you would have to draw out those boundaries, determine what they were, um, and then they could put that on the ballot themselves. Um, I believe that there would then be probably an approval process um, by the board of trustees of the district um, but it is something that we've talked about in the past um, where we do have some areas of population that aren't in the district boundaries that we want to be able to provide service. Um, so uh, all of that is outlined in the RCW's Washington Codes, uh, RCW 1728. Uh, there's also that process is outlined and linked to on our website, which is mosquitocontrol.org. In order to annex into a mosquito district, the boundaries of the current district would have to touch the boundaries of the new area. And so when folks in the Grandview area and Mapton wanted mosquito control, it was easier for them to annex into Benton County mosquito control than it would have been to annex into Yakima County mosquito control. And so the Benton County District actually crosses the county lines into Yakima and we go to about the Sunnyside Mapton Highway.
Benton County in particular and Yakima County um, have been kind of an epicenter for West Nile virus activity in Washington state. So usually that's what would come to mind if people are thinking mosquitoes and the diseases that they cause. Um, West Nile virus is a major concern, um, but we have also historically, we were formed because of St. Louis encephalitis. We have had Western equine encephalitis in the area. Um, luckily, those haven't been detected for quite some time, but we do test for them. So we trap mosquitoes on a regular basis. We trap for those three diseases. Um, and then we are always also looking for invasive species of mosquitoes. So um, if you would ask me 10 years ago, um, I would have thought that it was absurd that we would have kind of tropical um, species of mosquitoes that you would see, you know, Texas, Florida that have caused uh, many diseases such as dengue, Zika virus, chikungunya, um, yellow fever. So those, those illnesses, we would not have historically worried about in Benton County um, because we don't have the mosquito that transmits those diseases. Um, but those mosquito ranges are expanding and kind of coming up that California, Northern California into Oregon. Um, so that is something that we're always watching. So that would be a growing concern, which is why it's important for us to communicate with other mosquito control programs in other states um, to see where those um, ranges of mosquitoes um, are, are growing and expanding. Um, and so every year we start out with the assumption that we do have West Nile virus. It's epidemic in our area, endemic, I should say. Um, and so we are, you know, trapping, testing, b taking preventative measures um, all year round. And our majority of our staff works um, from most of the beginning of March till the end of September. Um, and a lot of what we do is treating standing water to prevent those mosquitoes from ever becoming adults. Because um, once they are adult flying mosquitoes that are biting you, that's when they're capable of transmitting disease. So again, also when they're gonna be annoying and you don't want them in your barbecue, but um, uh, we wanna make sure that the you know, mosquitoes out there are tolerable and that we're keeping the residents as safe as possible. So the main question that we get is from uh, residents that are Benton County residents, but not necessarily within the district boundaries. Um, so that the website um, will show our district boundaries just to clarify that. Um, another easy way is just to give us a call and give us your address and we can pull up property information to let you know if you are paying the Benton County assessment. Um, if you are outside the district and you are getting assessed, then we can make those corrections. Um, but we can certainly answer any questions. Um, even if people are outside the district boundaries, we are happy to provide general mosquito control information. Um, so I think one of the things that people would think when they hear about mosquito control is our trucks driving down the road or they think that that is the majority of what we do. Um, they see the plane up in the air and our plane that is up in the air during the day is putting out a dry material that is actually going into water to prevent mosquitoes from becoming adults. So a lot of people, when they see that plane, they think that there's a liquid coming out of that plane to kill flying adult mosquitoes. Um, we do have a plane that can do that, um, that we contract. Um, but we use it very infrequently and we that plane would fly at night after sunset. The website is going to be, it's mosquitocontrol.org. Um, we're very lucky to have that web address. We're easy to find. Um, we get questions from all over the country because of it. Um, and you know, we do, we have a Facebook page where you can ask, um, questions on that. We have a quick response time. Um, but the website will show you everything from the history of the district, how we're funded, um, how to contact us. Uh, there's a service request portion of that where, um, you can fill out the form online, um, pretty much ask, you know, for any level of service. If you just want information, we have a very quick response time. 
Uh, we're constantly monitoring that. It comes through our email. Um, otherwise, we always have people that are here and very willing to answer any questions or concerns that people have in the public. Um, so, you know, we are using pesticides and sometimes that's a sensitive subject for people or they have a lot of concerns about that, especially if they're new to the area, if they're new to a mosquito control district. Um, and so those are questions that we're certainly happy to answer. Um, the information on the website about you know, pesticides or integrated pest management, you know, those types of things, you could go down a rabbit hole on that. So if you're looking for, uh, you know, general information on the district, again, boundaries, where we're how we're funded, um, I would use that resource. Um, otherwise, you know, certainly give us a call or send us a, a service request and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We have a fantastic group of folks that are representing the people of Benton County and the cities and the counties uh, and the county commissioner districts. Um, so if you you know have um, the opportunity to meet your mosquito control board member, I would thank them. Um, so we have folks that have been on that board for you know 20 plus years. It is a thankless job. They you know sometimes get a cookie for their time that they come in. They're use taking their own time. Um, to come and you know serve the public and learn about the mosquito control program. Um, they have to listen to endless hours of me talking about mosquitoes and numbers and budgets and and all those things because I think it's very interesting, but it's not you know the most interesting to everyone. Um, and so you know those people, I would say, are very special in the fact that they are taking their time to come here, um, you know, making sure that the public is well represented and making sure that we are being good stewards of the taxpayer money. Um, we do have a special assessment district. So we are kind of this entity that is, has a county name. Um, we're local government. So we have some oversight with um, the state auditor, you know, comes in and audits us. Um, we do annual reporting and we, you know, those checks and balances are in place. Um, but it's really that that Board of Trustees has a certain level of power um, and we are always trying to um, make sure that we are serving the public to the best of our ability and I think they do a very good job of that. Um, so I would welcome anyone, like I said, to go to our website, contact us, contact them, um, call us and ask questions. You know, we're just very grateful that we have had the public support that we have had for so many years. We want to keep it that way.